Howdy folks, Carl Jorn here, uh, field agronomist up in Northeast Illinois today, evaluating a, uh, a field of early planted soybeans. For context, this would be around that April 10th or so planting date. Um, stand is establishing well, beans look healthy, they look happy, but the reason I'm out here is I wanted to get kind of an assessment of where they were prior to a cold forecast that we have upcoming. Um, we really get dialed in on, on cold temperatures at this time of year on soybeans because 30 degrees and lower for an extended duration, think of it several hours, that's about what it takes to start doing some damage to soybean tissue as they're emerging. Um, the position in which the beans are in is going to say a lot about how uh, resilient they are to that that impending forecast and those conditions. So that's why I'm out here just to get an eye on what they look like. I'll show you what I think looks good and what gives me pause. Um, but wanted to talk through a little bit more about the idea of early planted soybeans, right? We all understand that the earlier soybeans are planted, the more quickly they will reach flowering. The longer beans are in reproductive stages of growth, the more opportunity they have to capture peak sunlight as the season progresses. The more sunlight a plant harvests, the more yield potential it has to set and fulfill based on those August and September rains. That's why we're planting beans earlier than we did five or 10 years ago. In balance, we have what's too early where we subject the plant to frost or freeze damage. Um, frost being, call it 32 degrees, freeze being 28 degrees um, is how I think of those terms. So those are the things that we have in balance here. The reason why it's important on beans and not on corn, in beans the, the growing point is above the ground. Um, so I will show you what we're looking at in terms of growing points and again I'll, I'll kind of give you a look at, at which which plants I like and which ones I'm not not so sure are going to make it um, depending on uh, how this forecast comes through. As it comes to next steps don't look at it the morning after everything's going to just look cold but it'll probably look fine. Those soybeans will not begin to wilt and kind of damp off if they are dying until a handful of days later. So give yourself five days to return to the field and, and truly assess. At that point we should see new growth on the beans that that are still with us and we will see those laid over that aren't there. So uh, with that I'm going to go ahead and show you which which beans I think look good and which beans we're going to uh, we're going to have to wait and see. Okay so as we take a look at these beans in the row here uh, the, this plant tissue here is called the cotyledon. You have two cotyledons on your on your beans as they emerge. Um, this here in the middle those are your unifoliates. Underneath them is what we call the hypocotyl and so how beans emerge just as this guy's showing us here they actually pull the seed leaves the cotyledons up and out of the ground and so this uh, this plant tissue here the hypocotyl if that gets frosted off that's that's game over for that fella so that is the growing point. Once we have the cotyledons established, um, these are considered axillary buds and the unifoliate is now um, our, our primary growth point. And so that means you actually have three spots that we can go ahead and get, you know, we, we can lose one cotyledon, two cotyledons, or the combination of a cotyledon and the main growing point. So long as we preserve one of those three, we'll be in good shape. So beans that are vulnerable to the upcoming frost event. This guy here, his friend next door. You see he's about popped the cotyledons, the, the seed leaves out, so we may come up and out at, uh, ahead of this frost. Those that are yet to emerge are in good shape. Those that have fully emerged will likely be in good shape, but it's really, it's a series of beans like this where we have three heads buried in the sand. That's where, um, that's where we're unsure of what's going to become of them. Again, solution is to go ahead, wait five days um, before you assess that stand. Should you decide to take a look at these stands yourself at the five day mark, if you come up with consistently above 80,000, all systems go, you can, you can uh, rest easy. If you're trying to evaluate um, stands that are inconsistent, um, go ahead and call your Pioneer sales representative or your local agronomist. We'd be more than happy to come out, take a look, and, and advise you in a situation like that. Uh, it's once we get below that 80,000 and above 60,000, there's, there's room for nuance in that conversation. 
my opinion would be if you're anywhere below 60,000, it's a slam dunk. We ought to, we ought to thicken those, those beans up. So that's, uh, that's what I have for you here on this, uh, on this subject. So, um, should you have any questions or concerns, you just go ahead, reach out. Otherwise follow along on X at Cjorn or on Facebook at Cjorn Agronomy, and we will see you down the road. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.